Good afternoon and greetings from Addis Ababa. My name is Jane Bevan. I'm the Rural Wash Manager for UNICEF Ethiopia and it's my pleasure to introduce on behalf of the whole team here our work with the Ministry of Water on Rural Utilities. Traditionally in Ethiopia, as in many countries in Africa, we've used wash committees for managing water points. These are voluntary and work very well in a small community setting where it's one village, one hand pump. However, recent surveys have found that high levels of non-functionality, um, there are many different reasons for this non-functionality and one of the contributory factors is poor management. In addition to that, there has been a shift in Ethiopia gradually over the last few years and particularly in the last couple of years with the new one wash climate resilient wash strategy away from shallow and surface water sources to larger schemes based on deep boreholes. So based on a long experience in Ethiopia of different management models in many different settings, we've been working with the Ministry of Water to help develop a new rural utility model which is called a rural public utility. The key objective of the rural public utility is to help set in place a more professionalized management system for larger water schemes that serve several communities. In particular, this is to support the government of Ethiopia to meet the GTP2 goals of 2020, which are quite ambitious looking at improving functionality to over 90%. I think this close deadline is focusing minds for everybody. This schematic is designed to show the context of uh, where the rural utility sit, fits into the country situation. On the left, we have highly dispersed rural small villages with community managed wash committees. And in the top right, we have the urban utility setting. There's a clear gap in the middle for larger water schemes in a rural setting. And this is where the rural public utility will fit in. There is a very clear legal framework in the country within which the rural public utility can easily fit. The One Wash program to which UNICEF is a signatory is guided by the WASH implementation framework. However, as you know, as a federal country, the regions are governed very separately. And in order for any utility to be set up in a specific region, there has to be a regional proclamation announcing its formation. The structure for the utility is clearly laid out in the manual pictured here. Uh, and the principle is that one Moreda or district, which is equivalent to a small town size, will support several clustered water points with one utility, which will be answerable to a board managed by the Rural Water Board, the Regional Water Bureau in that region. Obviously, precise structures and uh, arrangements will vary between regions. It is envisaged that shifting from a cluster of wash committees to a multi-village context will help to centralize and concentrate skills around water point management will strengthen capacities and will increase accountability. The structure of urban utilities is clearly laid out already in the WASH implementation framework. And under our urban WASH program, we're working on strengthening existing town water bureaus, boards, sorry, and utilities, uh, building their capacity uh, and strengthening their accountability. And of course, the management of town boards includes the uh, not only the water, but also solid and liquid waste, looking at long term sustainability. I should emphasize that this is still a very new model and uh, the manual was only developed last year, was endorsed by the Ministry of Water and under the minister, a technical working group was formed to establish a rollout plan for the utilities. 
this has been divided into phases and the first phase which we're still in is focusing on three regions this is the predominantly pastoralist areas of Somali and Afar and the highland agrarian region of Amhara as part of the rollout for phase one which is seen very much as a pilot phase sensitization workshops have taken place already at national level and also in all the three regions and in addition to this there's been upstream advocacy work such as the development of the video on an existing large water scheme called Siraro, which is in the Aromaria region the link for the video is shown here UNICEF has partnered with ministry and regional water bureaus in those three regions and with different partners that are working in those regions to trial different styles of utility model in each of the regions. This map is to show UNICEF's work across the country in the last country program period ending in uh, 2017 on several large multi-village schemes there are over a hundred of these constructed by UNICEF alone and many others by the government and different partners it's clear that all of these will require greater support with sustainable utility management systems rather than the current voluntary wash committees in the lowland east of Ethiopia the population is highly dispersed and is predominantly pastoralist so we're looking at a slightly different utility model in these regions which will include remote monitoring through the use of borehole sensors this map of a far region is showing some of the schemes that UNICEF is currently working on in from Afdera in the Danakil depression in the north down to Burka in the south and just south of this map area is the city zone where there are a cluster of boreholes in the Shinili Wereda where we're currently working with Oxfam to look at a utility that will be centered on a board based in Shinili town Lega in Amhara is an example of a multi-village scheme in an agrarian setting as you can see from this schematic it has a complex infrastructure reaching over 21 villages including six schools and four health facilities all of this network of pipes taps and water points is reaching over 30,000 people and the utility is currently being trained to manage it in the west of the country in Benchangugumus region we have yet another different setting for the utility with long-term refugees in the region settling close to towns the water scheme has been developed to serve both the host community and the new settlers the utility model you see here is essentially an urban utility model with slight adaptations to support the refugee setting as well greater accountability is one of the key benefits of the utility model wash committees will be consulted and will feed satisfaction levels back to the utility and in turn the utility will be monitored on key performance indicators such as non-revenue water and the redress of complaints in terms of next steps I should emphasize again that this rural public utility model is still in its infancy and it's going to be adapted to specific regions and specific settings over the course of the next few years phase two of the rollout will see expansion to more regions and I believe that the model will continually evolve and adapt with the aim of improving sustainability and functionality rates thank you very much for listening